Now, let's talk legal. Was this legal? Was this not? Are there other problems there? Uh, employment attorney Andrew Lieb is back with us again tonight. Andrew, is it illegal to date someone who falls lower on the org chart? It's definitely a problem. I'm not gonna use the word illegal because we think of illegal as criminal, but it's actionable sexual discrimination for sure, unless it's completely consensual. And you would have to be having both parties signing waivers to have no exposure whatsoever. Let me put it like this to you, Chance. If his girlfriend asked for time off and someone else asked for time off, who is he's giving time off to? Because if he picks his girlfriend, he just sexually harassed the other gal. Mm. Okay, okay, I got you. Well, let me play devil's advocate. I know lots of couples. There are couples in my own family who met at work and they were on different levels and they go on to very happy lives. And in many cases, the wife is the one really in charge, you know? If there is no coercion or unearned professional benefits. Is it unethical to have a workplace romance? Because most people who meet and fall in love, they don't have the exact same job title. I think you just hit on my life in a way. My father married his paralegal. So I understand exactly what you're saying when he ran the law firm and I love my stepmother and they have a fabulous relationship. That said, that's from a different era. And in that era, it was okay to do that. In the era we are in now, it's just a terrible, terrible idea. And I have another issue with it. It's not just the micro of what McMahon's doing himself. It's the culture for which he's setting for this entire organization. And we're gonna see now all sorts of managers and supervisors having low, low barriers to what they deal as unethical behavior with their subordinates. And you're gonna see things come out of the woodwork chance because when the boss is not creating clear guidelines, everyone else is gonna be misbehaving too. Okay, but if the barriers get really low, I know that's good for employment attorneys because people can go slap them with a lawsuit, but is that good for culture because this is just reality. You know, I know what's on paper is one thing, but people are people. I gotta tell you that it sounds good, except when you look at this power differential. We're not talking about a small mom and pop business here, Chance. We're talking about a multi-million dollar, if not billion dollar corporation, where the head of the corporation, it has unlimited power differential to the people below them. And what we've learned in recent years is that these big age gaps between people, these power differentials between people, they used to be normalized and been okay. But now what we've learned is that they've created all sorts of adverse repercussions for the person that's on the lower end of the power spectrum. So I would say to you that if we went with what feels good, what feels normal, that's one thing. But if we go with the social science research, what we're doing is we're putting people in a corner, in a box, where forever they're gonna be needing to sexualize themselves to be able to advance. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you say, WWE, billions of dollars. It's a publicly traded company, although McMahon controls the voting shares pretty much. And there are maybe untold skeletons to come out of closets. We don't know just yet. Is this a Me Too thing or is this a run of the mill corporate governance thing? Well, right now, Chance, it's a corporate governance thing because the way we all know about it is there was an article that came out about this $3 million for what's called a severance agreement that included confidentiality and non-disparity. That's 101 that when people have severance, there's confidentiality and non-disparity. What really raises the red flag is that 3 million bucks. And then you look at it and you say, why was he giving this money? Where was going there? But right now, corporate governance, but as I'm trying to point out is that when you have the head of this billion dollar company and they have things like he stepped aside, but he didn't step aside, his daughter took over. And even though his daughter took over, you know what? He's still in charge of content. And when you have this energy where the lines and the rules are so vague, it raises questions about what else is going on. So is it possible that everything's above board besides breaching corporate governance and ethics and morals and things like that? Absolutely. But it shows a systemic issue in the entire company that can't be overlooked. Why is this publicly traded company being treated like his? nepotism family. All right, let's see how this plays out. Thank you so much. Chance, it's a pleasure and I'm looking forward to finding out what's next.